Now, BMW Motorola does know a thing or two about big adventure motorcycles. In fact, their R1250 GS is known around the world as a continent crusher. Heck, they've even taken a stab at small capacity adventure bikes in the form of the G310 GS. But as they say, the middle child of the family is the more sensible one. And in BMW Motorola's adventure family, this, the F850 GS, is their new middle child. So, is it more sensible than the bigger GS? But more importantly, does it do enough to take on our absolute favorite in this mid-capacity adventure segment, the Triumph Tiger 800 XCX? Uh, about that, sorry we couldn't get a Tiger, but there will be some comparisons nonetheless. Now the whole point of having a mid or even a large capacity adventure bike is to cover highway miles with ease. So, how does the 850 fare in that department? Well, sorry to start things off on a slightly negative note, but in that department, it's not so impressive. Firstly, the default wind protection isn't that great, and it's also not adjustable. So, on the highway, at highway speeds, I kept hearing a crazy amount of wind noise and whistling in my helmet. Of course, BMW Motorrad will offer you a better windshield as an accessory. And then there's the seat. It is a bit soft and a bit narrow. Now this width is great for off-roading, but for long hours in the saddle on the highway, your bum can hurt a little bit. But I'm sure BMW will offer you a better seat as an accessory. Of course, you can carry luggage with you on the highway as this Pro version offers you pannier mounts as standard. But the panniers, those are accessories. Now, one of my bigger concerns is this riding position. Now, the handlebars, they seem a bit too far away from you. So, even with my height of 510, I'm kind of stretching to reach them. It almost feels like the Suzuki V-Storm 650 XT, like it was designed for much taller riders. So, on the highway over long distances, my upper back does go for a toss. But the one department where it does quite impress is its fuel efficiency, which on the highway and even in the city is much higher than that on the Triumph Tiger 800 XCX. And that thanks to... Now this is a pretty good engine. And at 853cc, it's now larger than before. And it's got a 270 degree firing order, which means it's punchy like a V-twin. So, while it does not make as much power as the Tiger 800, it actually makes more torque. Open the throttle and get past 5000 RPM and the bike just takes off. Well, actually, internationally, it does make the same power as the Tiger. But in India, we get 5 PS less so that the motor can run properly on 91 octane fuel. In fact, in terms of acceleration, it's marginally quicker than the Tiger. But there's a distinct lack of bottom end. So to compensate for that, BMW has made first, second and third gear really short, which really does help the 850's case when you're off the road and giving that extra grunt on the dirt. And fourth, fifth and sixth gear are made quite tall for easy highway cruising. But that means you really can't pull in high gears from low speeds. So even at 60 kph in 6th gear, if you open the gas, the engine settles a little bit. But the biggest concern here is just the way that engine sounds. Now don't get me wrong, it is fairly smooth, but it sounds just so clattery and it can get so annoying on the highway. Now I am going to touch upon handling just a little bit. First of all, the steering has a great range, which means maneuvering through traffic is really, really easy. But show it some corners and that massive 28 degree rake becomes very apparent. The front end feels really vague and steering feels rather lazy too, thanks to that massive 126mm off trail. So what I am saying is, this is not the most fun bike to have on a twisty mountain road. But the brakes. They are actually quite good, with decent feel and plenty of bite. And in fact, braking distances are actually lesser compared to the Tiger XCX. So, where does the F850 GS really excel at then? Well, 
that would have to be at its affordability, which is really right up there. And that's thanks to a few things. Firstly, its weight. Yes, it is actually heavier, a lot heavier compared to the Tiger 800 XCX, but you will never feel that weight. And that has to do with the way the weight is distributed. And that's something BMW is an absolute expert at. Then the bike actually feels a lot narrower compared to the Tiger, which means when you're maneuvering over tight off-road trails, it's just so much easier. Even the ergonomics are absolutely spot on for stand-up riding. So I will say the default positions of the rear brake lever and the shifter are a bit low for my taste. And then helping you off-road are those spoke wheels which run tubeless tires which are a boon for those who want to tread off the beaten path. And even these tires, these Michelin Anarchies, they work decently well on tarmac but they really come into their own on the dirt. And on top of that, this Pro version comes with electronically adjustable suspension at least at the rear which means at the push-off button you can set not just the rear damping but also the rear payload. This semi-active suspension monitors rear wheel travel and adjusts damping automatically based on your selected riding mode and the surface you're riding on. And this ensures that the rear wheel maintains as much contact with the surface as possible. Great for maximizing traction in the dirt. However, the front is non-adjustable and is set a fit on the softer side, so over really sharp bumps, it can bottom out once in a while. And speaking about electronics, this Pro version also gets dynamic traction control, which I think works really well. It cuts in quite gently and doesn't feel too interfering, which is great for off-road newbies like myself. And of course, there are riding modes to make your life easier. Rain, road and dynamic which come as standard. But on this Pro version, you get a chip which you can plug under the seat that enables the Enduro Pro mode that gives you a few more options for your traction control and for your ABS. Basically, it lets you dial these settings back so you can go completely apeshit off the road. The other thing that's impressive about this F850 GS is just how well put together this motorcycle is. The quality of plastics is top-notch, the panel gaps are extremely consistent and everything just feels solid, like a proper BMW should. Then would you look at this switch gear. Granted, it's not the most intuitive to use, but it's just so well made. You can also get this excellent full-color TFT instrument screen, which has Bluetooth connectivity, music control and even navigation. And it can also act like a hub for helmet headsets to facilitate communication between the rider and pillion. But then the screen, well, that's a 60,000 rupee extra. Now, this is not a comparison. But if what you want from an adventure doing motorcycle is mostly highway use with some off-road thrown in as well, then I think the Triumph Tiger 800 XCX makes a lot more sense. But if you have a thirst for adventure, then this F850 GS is absolutely phenomenal. It's a shining example of just how well BMW Motorrad understands the adventure touring motorcycling genre. And while it might not crush continents like the R1250, this is definitely the most sensible GS of them all. So while my personal tastes in adventure motorcycles might tilt towards the Brits, if I had to pick amongst these Germans, I think my choice would definitely be this F-150 GS. <laughs>